we are spending 1.1 trillion shillings every year to pay salaries and wages of the 2.4 of the 2.2 trillion we collect it is way above what we should be spending we are spending 47% our wage bill is 47% of our revenues it should be 35% according to the law so we are way above so that's the president. That's the explanation he gave on Sunday um, in a chat service. And Horobo Madenga, you were making a statement there. And I just wanted to tie this because, yes, it is true that there are, there are fiscal challenges in the country. And you're saying that there's education that has to be financed by close to 30% of um, the revenue that uh, the country collects. You're also mentioning other services. But health is as important as education because if you're not in good health, then you cannot even go to school. You cannot even go to teach. Absolutely. How, how do we make sure that we are focusing on all priorities while being fair? Because even the people that are taking to school with a budget of more than 600 billion shillings, if they're sick. some of them will become doctors. The doctors need to work. They're asking for resources to take the internship for licensing. And after that, they get employed by the systems and start to work. So let, let's, let's, let's begin there. And conceptualizing what internship, internship in the medical profession is. And number one, as an intern, you actually do not have a license mm -hmm. and you are not registered to practice independently. Mm -hmm. Uh, therefore, in essence, you're being incubated, if I can use that as a term, because you work under supervision. In this pay package that is contested now in this uh, bargaining uh, CBA, is a non-practice allowance that is factored in. So somebody who is not licensed and registered, what is this practice allowance that they, sh they are being, being paid? So, so that's number one. Number two. So, so, sorry, let, let's break that down because yes, uh, in, SRC said you can pay between forty-seven to seventy thousand stipend. Yes, yes. In fact, some of the letters that I've seen yes. being issued to doctors yes. um, who want to go for internship, yes. and it refers to them as dear doctor so and so. Yes. It is seventy thousand shillings. Yes. So you are talking about non-practicing allowance. Uh -huh. But have you looked at the work they do while at the facility? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. uh, the confirmment of the title doctor mm. is on the basis of academic credentials. Right. Not skills, competence, and experience. Sorry, what are you the, saying? Yes. The title of a doctor in the medical profession mm. is confirmed once you complete the prescribed course at the university. So, so you're saying it doesn't mean you have the, the skill? And, and in the course of that training, it is a recognized practice worldwide that you do not have the depth of practical contact with patients in the course of training such that immediately you leave college, you can go and get deployed and open your own clinic and operate immediately the same night you graduate the following day. There is a gap recognized globally. Mm. That is why internship is a global phenomenon. Which is meant to observe and you and clear you because you also sit an examination for licensing, isn't it? Yes, in this country, if you're trained here, you don't sit. It is sufficient that your supervisors, and that's why they are, uh, you are supervised by uh, master's graduates and professors. Uh, that, you know, their experience is sufficient. By the way, they can, you can fail internship, and they do fail, and data is available. I'll give you an example. We had one doctor who had come, who had been trained in uh, Russia mm. when I worked at Kenyatta National Hospital. He was, his, he was referred for internship for three years. He did the first year. He didn't meet the cut. He continued the second how, year. How did, by, how did they determine he didn't meet the cut? The, the supervisors. Because once you go for internship, 
there is a, a, a document mm -hmm. that the doctors feel, your supervisors feel, showing your competence in the different um, uh, in the different uh, areas mm. uh, of, of uh, medicine or dentistry or pharmacy. So you can be, you, you fail and you are referred. And actually, if you fail at that time, if you failed three times, you actually went back to the, de to the dental school or mm. the medical school for one year. I believe I may not have the, uh, the, you know, the finite details now because I, I, I left uh, public service quite um, some time back, but I believe that process is still there. And that is why, because in the new constitution, we created the Salaries and Remuneration Commission and gave it a mandate on advising how salaries for public and state officers should be handled, then we must, as a country, listen to their advisory. Mm and negotiate around that advisory. Because it, as it is advisory, it has room for some markup or downgrades. The next one is the Office of the Controller of Budget and their role in the Constitution in advising how we spend our money. So in that context, then we bring in the desire by doctors for better remuneration. So we have to bring the three components together, the doctors, as critical care providers, mm. essential service providers. The salaries and the numeration condition and, uh, and its mandate in handling uh, and okay. advising on payments okay. and the controller of budget. Oh, okay. Lastly, I, 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 lastly, I lastly think, Sam, yeah. Yeah. Just, just, just one more uh, comparison. Lawyers. And of course, you'll say lawyers are not offering critical services, but they are Kenyans. Their training period is comparable. They will not be able to practice until they have gone through the licensure, which includes a one-year diploma at the Kenya School of Law, engineers. Sorry, did you just compare the training of lawyers and doctors? Yes. How? How so? Lawyers, after training, mm. They, they, they actually... They train for how many years? I believe they, they are training for four years. Of how many terms or semesters per year? The, the semesters will depend. If it's uh, in, the, in the public sector, I think they will be... So two. an academic year is how long? It's two years, it's two, two, two semesters, seven. you say? Yes. How about a, a medical student year? Five years. Five or six? Five. Five, they used to be... And how long is a, is a year, is an academic year? How many terms or semesters? I believe they are, they are either going to be two or three. It depends on the program that you are following by the, you, uh, by the specific there, there university. There are three terms per yeah. academic year for six years, which is 18, 18 terms. Mm -hmm. Lawyers will take four times two, which is eight semesters. And then they take the Sam, can, for can, I, can when, I help? When, when, when but I, I, I hear you, Honorable Matenge. Sam, let me help, Matenge. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I, first of all, would like to say that uh, I am very proud of the Nyeri governor. I've, I've engaged him in the Senate and uh, is somebody I hold with high esteem. Uh, if, if he has signed the CBA with his doctors and um, he has completed the, the signing and implementation of that, I recommend him and I want to tell uh, the, my brother, Leader Madenge, that that is in fact a very good idea. The problem that you have with the doctor strike is very simple. I've had my brother uh, Madenge speak and chair. Chair, the problem is not that doctors wouldn't want to listen to the president. What the doctors are saying is very simple. Look at the way your government is mis messing up money. I mean, you guys are driving with 15 motorcades, people are going abroad for trips. Somebody carries uh, nine people on a trip to one, negotiate a small thing and come back. Look at what is happening with helicopters going to funerals. This wastage is what is making Kenyan employees and Kenyan people say that, yes, if the government was saying, let's introduce austerity, let us stop the misuse and misallocation of resources, let us make sure that our county governments are functioning properly. If the leadership of this country can actually de deliberately listen what many people have talked about, Kenya as a country, and I want to mention to my president, it is not that we don't have the money. Because I sit in the budget committee, we have the money. 
Why am I saying so, Sami? Look at the revenue we were collecting a year ago. Right now, we are actually hitting a trillion after the new taxes were implemented. The amount of money that doctors are asking is about 14 billion. So what are you telling me that you've collected a trillion and you're not able to pay 14 billion? When you see the amount of money that is being used to renovate buildings in state house, all the CSS who are given jobs by the president, each one of them, and they are 20, spent not less than 150 million shillings to renovate their offices. It was on social media. CSS or CSS? All right. The point I'm making is very simple. Sorry, who, who did you say? I said most of the cabinet members. You remember when uh, my brother and friend Moses Kuria went to, to go and uh, renovate an office at uh, Rivers. Uh, Two Rivers? I mean, th this is the largesse. This is the, 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 I mean, we are handling Kenya as if it's, it's, a country, it's like it's Dubai that we have done all our roads, we have done the railways, the doctors are happy, everybody. so people are just taking money, they are buying the big cars. I mean, the, the point that I want my brothers and Kenyans to understand is this, we are not supporting the doctors because we know the government has excessive money. We are saying, yes, try and reduce their wastage and their necessary expenditures that we are spending on nothing and take this money and give it to the doctors. Number two, look at what is happening on the accidents. Every single day, I see Honorable, uh, the CS for transport, Murkomen. Oh, we are going to introduce technology. Oh, we are going, and you know, we are going to, he wants the accidents to stop by miracles. These accidents will not stop. The reason is, we don't have a strategy in terms of what you are going to do with the public transport. I can tell you, Sami, a driver will leave, for example, Kisumu, drive to Nairobi, he's carrying passengers, he gets to Nairobi and finds his colleague who was to take over from him is not there. He sold drive back to Kisumu, he drives to Kisumu another eight hours, and the following day he drives back. Somebody drives 22 hours, he's carrying passengers on the highway, and you expect nothing to happen. And you can do that by introducing technology where a driver who comes and is taking over a car can sign in. It is so simple. Can sign in and the gadget is put in the car. And it is what? It's biometric which will register. So that you know that this individual, if he had driven uh, for the last 18, 18 hours, he will not be allowed to get into that vehicle. That is what the Rwanda government has done. If you go to Rwanda and you go in Nairobi, you see how they drive on their roads. You can see there is order, there is coordination. You can see how border border riders are driving. Come to our cities and towns and look at the way we behave. So it's a mindset. Our software is where the problem is. We are dealing with the hardware. Mm -hmm. We are talking about, oh, the roads are not good. You know, the problem is that place in Nakuru, the accidents are always happening. I mean, Sam, we just need to be a little bit more careful and more engaged in solving the problems of our country. We are very, we are just casual. I mean, we are casual. We look at everything casually. We, we, we treat uh, uh, an emergency mm -hmm. on that particular day and we are done. You see what I'm saying? I can tell you today, Sam, if today, look at these rains which are taking place and two buildings collapse, you know we don't even have equipment to solve that. Who thinks about it? No, I mean, th th this is what worries me about my country. So the problem with the doctors mm -hmm. is not that the doctors are asking for anything excessive. What we are saying on the other side is this. We want, my brother, the government has got some gains. We want the government of the day to make sure that some of these issues that are coming up are dealt with with the seriousness okay. it requires. These doctors are our, our daughters, our, our brothers. These are Kenyans who want to serve. And yet, how do we treat them? And it's not politics. I mean, I, I can tell you, as I said, when I started here, the doctors in Kisi County, 80% of them, if you talk to them, they tell them how I wish I could leave this county. Why? Because we mistreat them, we manhandle them, we handle their, uh, their, their industry as if it's a, it's a political arrangement. We are worried about who the doctors are supporting at the local level. We shouldn't be dealing with those things. The doctor's job is to go and treat patients. You allow doctors to go and run healthcare facilities. What do we do? When we come in as governors, we employ our cousins, our uncles who never even went to school.
All right, uh, Senator um, uh, uh, Richard Onyonka. Um, I am told by KMPDU that um, it is not true that Nyeri County has implemented CBA to the letter. They say they have not paid any uh, doctors the basic salary arrears for seven years. Well, that's why I was telling you that's that what KMPD is my saying. brother Madenge spoke. But I <laughs> Before the end of the show, we'll have verified from uh, the location that is in Nyeri County to just understand what is going on there so that we see uh, the threats by the governor that the, he's going to sack them, are they well placed, <laughs> that everything has been uh, sorted out, or it's just a um, question of um, threats. I want to transition to the question of fertilizer and uh, listen to the Before president. Before you transit. Uh, <laughs> yes, Chairman. Uh, I think it is good to, 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 to say a few things about what uh, Senator Anyonka has said. Yep. First of all, I am not a crusader of waste. Mm. As a person, I believe in rational, rational allocation of resources, and I believe in reduction of waste and being logical in what we do, especially at the ministry level. Uh, some of the exa examples that we give sometimes are misleading, like using airplanes to go to funerals and so on and so forth. I don't think that is the situation. The truth is very far from it. The second issue is when it comes to accidents, uh, there are always reasons why accidents occur. They are called accidents, and they occur everywhere in the world. Mm. For instance, we need also to probably even ask ourselves whether it was as a result of lack of visibility. We know it is raining right now, and uh, I know Ngata very well. I lived in Akru for five years, so I know the area very well. So I know it could have been as a result of visibility, lack of visibility, or it could have been as a result of this stored vehicle was not probably properly marked, which is and deliver it action by omission by the person who parked the vehicle. There is a law that stipulates that you must give signages and place them at a distance where people will be able to prepare themselves in the event that they find themselves in danger. So there is also the, the, the disobedient part of it. And when we take the government to task and blame the government for everything and assume that we're in a situation, a utopic situation, where a government can sort out everything easily, simply, <laughs> just by, <laughs> I think it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little bit careless. I don't think I, 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 I would go that direction. Okay. So I would like to say this. There are laws in this country. There are regulations in this country. We need to ask ourselves who is actually breaking the law, who is not obeying what is already put down so that we can now blame the government if we have to on what the omissions and the commissions. And in, this, in such cases, I think Kenha has tried. I think uh, the, the, the highway authority has been very keen in marking the roads and, and showing where, where the dangerous parts of this of the roads and even controlling the speed of putting bumps on the highway. And we are the same, the same people who come here and complain. You are putting so many bumps on the highway. I don't know, this country is very, things are very difficult. Let's be a little bit careful when you're using okay. Sam, Sam, allow me just to yeah. uh, react on only one item that uh, uh, Senator uh, colleague has uh, raised. Mm -hmm. The question of Kisi and who the doctors at the local level are supporting. How do doctors find time to be involved in the local politics? They don't. Yet we have the burden of disease in Kisi with the uh, uh, indicators showing whether we are improving stagnating or deteriorating. Mm. Let us devolve, uh, let, let, let us uh, isolate politics from the current problems. If we have issues of salary arrears in a CBA, then the question of how those resources, because they are not in the budget will be mobilized, has to have, has to be a, an issue of interest, even for the KMPDU, when the next budgeting cycle comes, and you ask whether the, uh, what role parliament has, uh, has played, it is the first time in my one and a half years in parliament that KMPDU has brought a petition to parliament. So in also them, as they say, the government went on strike. They also went to slumber. Of course, ideally, the question of how should things <laughs> run once we have an agreement comes to the fore. So, but the budgeting okay. process is mm. participatory. Okay. I am urging my colleagues in the medical profession to have an interest in the budget, budgeting process. And health has received the 
No, I, 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 I hear you, Honorable Mwatenge, and I want us to transition, but I also take issue with what you're saying, that um, they have been in deep slumber, they should take interest in the budget-making process. Why then do they sign CBAs? Because collective bargaining agreement is supposed to assure them that. It is up to the ministry to find the resources, or the government to find resources to fund the CBA. I agree. And this is a question that is seven years old. Uh, let me let me pick what uh, Onyonka, Senator Onyonka has said. That currently, the mindset, currently the mindset, that whose mindset? All of us. Uh -huh. All of us across the board. That because it is so easy for us to keep going round the mountain that is in front of us. It's been seven years. Yes, fact. Nobody is disputing. At this point in time, what are our tangible options? And you're not giving me that answer because you're telling me that they need to take an interest in the budget, the budget. process. And, and yes, because right now we are in the budgeting process. But you see, Honorable Madenge, please, you say they pay attention to the budget making process. You're the same person here who is saying that we do not have resources. We have to listen to the control of budget. We have to listen to the Salaries and Remuneration Commission. So what are you saying? In fact, Senator Onyonka has said he sits in the budgeting committee. No, no, you, the, the, what are the, you the conversation, The conversation is that every sector in the country has to state its case and justification in the budgeting process. Uh, because Sammy. it is a budget of give and take, Sammy. we do not have the resources necessary to meet all our needs so in if, one go. Even if the doctors and the medical officers pay attention to the budget making process, it is amounting to nothing because you don't have the resources. I, I think there's a, there, 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 there there's a balance. There's possibility. They need to negotiate before the B, when the BPS is under, uh, under for me. Sami, can I please? That is where provisions can be put. And, the, and, the, the and I get that, Chairman. I'm just wondering, because the ministry knows it has obligations as per the CBA, is it the doctors to come and remind parliament there's these resources you need to allocate, or it's up to the ministry to make that available? Thank you. The, the point, ministry, the ministry. Sammy, the yeah. point I'm making is this. Can you imagine if we had extension officials in the Ministry of Agriculture who would be on strike complaining about how they've not been paid, and my colleagues are saying they should have been involved in the budget process? The it, is the, it is the National Assembly, with consultation with the national government, that comes up and considers what the obligations of the government are and what the responsibility of that government are. The point I want to raise with my brothers is this, and I, I thought Chairman uh, mostly misinterpreted what I was saying. Chairman, what I am saying is this. I am not saying that the national government, by individuals being wasteful, that as a result, it is the government I'm blaming for not having paying the doctors. What I've said is, if the public perception is that we are taking state resources and we are locating them to sectors or areas where, in fact, these state resources, Sami, are not effectively being utilized. The problem that I have is that those individuals who feel entitled, for example, the doctors who deserve to be, uh, for their CBA to be honored, will not agree with you. Why? Because this is something that was negotiated seven years ago. This is something that the government should have implemented. In fact, I'm so happy. I'm, I'm very, very happy because my two colleagues are no longer blaming Uhuru. Right now, we would be blaming, oh, this was Uhuru's problem. He's the one who started. You know the usual blame Uhuru and don't blame Uhuru. What, what I'm saying is very simple. I'm asking my colleagues to talk to their leadership figure out how you are going to sort out the problem of the doctors. Let the government be serious enough to realize that we have challenges at the national level and we have worse challenges at the county governments. When I raise the issue of the doctors, for example, in Kisi, I'm not saying that doctors are involved in the politics of Kisi, no. What I'm saying, it is we politicians mm. who actually end up blaming the doctors when we are mismanaging them. Okay. All right, oh, that, oh, that oh, is right. the point I was trying to make. Let's transition to the question of fertilizer and start by listening to the president on the warning 